We are on Wildfire Watch once again in Arizona tonight. The strong winds have died down a bit, but two wildfires continue to grow at this hour. Let's begin with the largest one in the state. The tunnel fire burning northeast of Flagstaff now at more than 19,000 acres. The Timberline areas and all areas north of Lenox Road and south of Forest Service 545, including Wapaki Trails, are now under mandatory evacuations. South of Prescott, the Crooks Fire also growing. This one stands at 1600 acres and no containment evacuation still in place for all of the areas highlighted in yellow in green. It's all national forest land working to be protected as that fire grows. There is a community meeting set for 630 tonight. We've got team coverage for you tonight with teams uh, all over the, the uh, state from the front lines and we're also hearing from homeowners as we're tracking new concerns winds picking up in the coming days. Let's begin with ABC 15 anchor Faye Fredericks in Flagstaff. Yeah, Steve, we're just northeast of Flagstaff along Highway 89, and uh, the winds, as you can tell, are really gusting off of the San Francisco peaks that you can see there behind me right now. Normally, when we talk about a fire this size, nearly 20,000 acres, we usually expect to see that huge plume of smoke, but because these winds are gusting so much, it is actually blowing that smoke out all over the place. I want to bring in some brand new video now that we just shot. This is looking northwest toward the fire lines. Again, that white smoke just blanketing the ground there outside of Flagstaff. Highway 89A is where it's burning just northeast of the city. It's oh, that is the main road between Flagstaff and the Navajo Nation and some of the Hopi tribal lands. It is closed just north of here, and that is where ABC 15's Nicole Grigg is. And Nicole, you've uh, been out in Flagstaff all day. You've been talking with fire officials and homeowners. Give us the latest from where you are. Yeah, Faye, you know what? This wind is really starting to pick up out here. Where I'm at, this is actually um, a road closure site. You have to check in with the Coconino County Sheriff's Office before you can even go beyond this point. And Faye, I actually want to direct you kind of off in the distance because we see some new smoke that's starting much closer to where we are just on the other side of 89A. Uh, you can see that smoke. That is a brand new uh, little pop-up area. Fire officials tell telling me uh, that spot fires have been causing major concerns for them today all around this fire, not just one area. And I just want to show you, you can see this is the Timberline Estates area. You can see this smoke uh, has been growing and um, decreasing throughout the day. Uh, at times it gets darker. Right now the smoke is white, though. Um, but those spot fires, that means that the embers are igniting small fires all across the uh, uh, perimeter of this fire, causing concern. Now, this video uh, shot from Department of Forestry and Fire Management, th this is one of the most dramatic images of the tunnel fire uh, from yesterday, but it shows how this was a wind-driven fire. So any wind is of concern still. Another concern out here, resources. I'm told some of these firefighters, they haven't stopped. They're exhausted. We know there are nearly 300 firefighters on the ground. Fire officials can't get in front of this because of the wind, so they can't fight it from the front. Instead, they're fighting this fire from the heel of it. Again, over 2,000 people evacuated. There are still structures at risk around every direction of this fire, including the Timberline Estates area. We spoke with one woman who lives in that area about how this fire um, has been about two miles from where she is. Terrifying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Were you packing? Were you getting ready to evacuate? I had stuff ready. My husband said he wasn't going to go, but I had stuff ready. We'd been through this with the um, Schultz Pass fire. We could see flames and everything, but last yesterday and last night it was totally. Uh, it was. I didn't sleep. <laughs> Put it that way. And um, it will be another long night tonight. I actually just got off the phone with a fire official. They say that we now have 30 mile per hour gusts that they're reading. So that, of course, is a concern as we head into the next uh, few hours and into the evening. Faye. 
Yeah, Nicole, thank you very much. And as more people prepare to evacuate as those flames get closer, American Red Cross is working to ensure they have some place to go. ABC 15's Luz Delia Caballero joining us live now with details. Yeah, Faye, we've actually seen people coming down Highway 89 since around 9 o'clock in the morning. And while traffic has significantly slowed down, that may soon change because of this wind. I know Nicole mentioned it earlier, but if you take a look behind me as Luis zooms in, those clouds, that smoke moving really quickly, that wind is really picking up. We spoke to folks with the American Red Cross who say the shelter is up and running at Sanawa Middle School located on Butler Avenue in Flagstaff. They say they're ready to welcome those who have been evacuated from their homes, campsites, campers, and RVs. If you got an evacuation order, um, please, one, go. And you can come here, you can catch your breath. We can provide a cot, we can provide hygiene supplies, we can provide a blanket, we provide meals, snacks, something to drink. And that's all to ensure those who are fleeing the fire are comfortable. They do have a capacity of 160 people and are working with the Coconino Humane Society, who's providing shelter for pets. And coming up all new at six, you're going to hear from folks who tell us they've lost part of their livelihood in this fire, but they also share what they're most thankful for during this time. Faye?